to Life Gate Kids at home. I'm Pastor Cami, and I am so excited to see you guys here. I'm so glad that your faces are shining and beautiful and that you're awake and ready for such a beautiful morning that we have planned. So before we get started, I do wanna do something. You wanna do it with me? You wanna know what it is? We're gonna pray because praying sets the tone for anything we're going into. So can we pray that we have a fun and awesome morning all right, here we go. Let's close our eyes and fold our hands, or you can put them on your heart, or you can hold them out, whatever you feel comfortable with. Here we go, let's do it. God, today we just come here to be with you. We come here to have fun and to experience your joy and to see your beautiful face and experience your love. So God, would you just do that for us this morning? And would we just have so much fun experiencing your presence and learning more about you? In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, guys, just like what I said about setting the tone, we're going to continue that by worshiping. So to get started, I want you guys to do something. And it might feel a little uncomfortable at first, but this is something that I do to prepare myself for stepping into worship with God. So I want you to close your eyes again. All right, so close your eyes and take a big, deep breath. And we're going to pretend that we are here to meet with God today. All right. And he is in a secret place and in a secret room. And this room has a special security. And the only way that you could enter it was by giving a password. Now you might think this password's really hard to get, but let me tell you, it's not. Because Paul encouraged his friends even in the Bible. In Psalm 104, it says to enter with the password and the password is thank you. So just like Paul's friend, when we come to meet with God in the church, he wants us to enter with the password thank you and have a grateful heart and just be ready to come and express our love for him. So can we do that? Continue closing your eyes just for one more second and in your heart, just say, God, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for loving me and thank you for your love. And in this room and in this moment right now, I just wanna worship you. All right, good job guys. Now let's open up our eyes and let's worship as we sing, thank you. Nate. 
just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna. I just wanna thank you, cause everything you made is so Awesome job worshiping, guys. We're gonna go into our second song. And I wanna remind you, always come with a grateful heart, right? Because we wanna show him that we're so thankful for him. And Paul even continues saying, when we meet with God, we should make ourselves at home and talking praise and singing praise and just giving him all we got. So let's tell God how amazing he is by worshiping him to the second song. Praise be a weapon, the silence is the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise, let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and claim your victory. Let it rise, let praise arise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. Oh, let faith be the song that overcomes the raging sea. Let faith be the song that calms the storm inside of me. Let it rise. Down every wall, we'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high. With all creation, cry, God, we praise you. what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like we praise you we praise you this is what living looks like this is what freedom feels like this is what heaven sounds like. We praise you, we praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. For fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all creation cry, God, we praise you. Whoa. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I gotta let it out. I can't hold back my praise. I 
Awesome job worshiping. I hope that you guys really got to experience God's love while you were worshiping him. I have a question for you. Are you ready? And I'm just gonna let you know, it also ties in with our theme for the month because I haven't told you what that is yet. And I know you've just been sitting on the edge of your seat and waiting for it. So here it is. Here's my question and the theme for the month. Are you ready? Who has ever ran in a race before? I mean, against your brother, against someone at school, maybe your neighbor, maybe your dad. I'm sure that there are a lot of people that you have raced before. And if you run a short race, you don't need much training, do you? You just go and you run it and you go and you're having fun. But if you were to run a longer race, you would need something called commitment. Can you say that with me? Commitment, hmm, what is commitment? Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. It takes commitment to do all sorts of things like homework, playing on a sports team, drawing a masterpiece with chalk on your driveway, or even running in a race like a 5K. Cause that takes a lot of commitment, doesn't it? So just like that, we need commitment to do those things. We also need commitment in our relationship with God too. Did you know that? Yeah, we need to make a plan and put it into practice so we can grow more and more like him because he's the ultimate example of what the type of person we need to be, right? So all month long, we are going to train to grow in our relationship with him, which is just absolutely the best thing that we could ever do is be more like him. Okay, you might think, Pastor Jamie's probably done asking me questions, but I'm not. I have one more question for you. Do you think hard things take practice? Hmm, we found out they take commitment, but do they take practice? If you're gonna go run a 5K, is that gonna take practice? It is gonna take practice because doing hard things takes practice. That's the answer. And so today we are going to hear a story about practicing the most important things. Let's listen. What are you doing, John? Trying to finish 5K. You know that's not how 5Ks work, right? What? There's a lot of fiber in this. <laughs> oh, oh, no. And yeah, now that's how 5K is supposed to work. Way to go. I'm John. I'm Brandon. And welcome, welcome to, to the So and So Show. Brandon and I have committed to run a 5K. Why? I'm not sure. Someone 
thought it was a good idea. Uh -huh. Well, when you commit to running a race, you need to make a plan on how to get yourself ready and stick to that plan. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do one of those training apps that you can get on your phone. There's, there's one called Couch to 5K that mm -hmm. looks really good, but then John said- I said we couldn't do that. No app is going to prepare us for the ups and downs, the peaks and valleys, or the ebbs and flows of running a race. Have you ever actually run a race? No, no. but that's, that's beside the point. Racing is like life. You never know what life is going to throw at you. Mm -hmm. It's unpredictable. Yeah. So I developed a training course myself that will take us through unpredictable situations in multiple climates, so we'll be prepared for anything. The real race might throw at us. Okay, but you know that we're running the 5K in the spring on a city street. Okay, let's so talk. More, more practice. Come on, buddy. Let's go to the course. <laughs> High knees. High knees. Sigh. Okay, why, why are we doing this? There's no way we're gonna be running in the snow, right? Because you have to be prepared, Brandon. When you commit to something, you have to be ready for any outcome. And we have had some late spring snowstorms. When? You know, in the spring of 1970. It is not gonna snow, John. <laughs> you can't predict the weather, Brandon. And switch. Oh. oh, now we're in the desert? This will never happen. What? We, we, we can make a wrong turn in a race and end up in the desert. Oh, flying cactus! Ah! Oh, 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 oh. oh, and switch! Oh! Seriously, John! This is getting out of hand! Practice! Wow! Makes! Oh! Perfect! Oh! And switch! Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, this is more like it. This is what we should be training for. Wait for it. I want what? my two dollars! Ow! What was that? <laughs> it's a paper boy. He's ruthless. Huh? Oh, heads up! What? Ow! <laughs> Can we stop now, please? I think we're prepared! Two dollars! <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're that prepared. <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh. Look out! Whoa! Hey guys, uh, what's going on? Oh, we're training for a 5K. Yeah, we're practicing commitment, duck. Oh. Ah, <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about today. I mean, not running and dodging newspapers, but the commitment part. Well, great, take it away, Kellen. This comes from the book of 1 Corinthians. Now, 1 Corinthians was a letter the Apostle Paul wrote to the Jesus followers in the city of Corinth. Paul wrote the letter to encourage people to stay committed to living the way Jesus would want them to live. This letter is like a speech a coach might give a team to really get them pumped up. It starts like this. In a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize. You know that, don't you? So run in a way that will get you the prize. Pretty inspiring stuff, but I think we could do it even better. Help me out, cheer squad. Hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? Are you ready to commit? I was born ready. Mm -hmm. Who is ready to run this race? I am. Who is ready to run this race? That's me. When you are running, here's what we advise. You should run in a way that will get you the Awesome. But just to be clear, I don't think Paul was telling us to go out and literally start running. Really? Really? Really. I think Paul was comparing our lives to a race. When you're in a race, you do the best you can, right? It takes commitment and practice. But when you're running with a goal in mind, the finish line, it's the same with your life. You should try to do the best in life. It'll take commitment and it'll take practice, but the goal should be to live your life like there's a prize at the end. Now, Paul gave us a hint in what that prize could be. He wrote, all who take part in the games train hard. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. 
Now, the people reading this letter in Paul's day would have known the kind of crown you could win in a race. It would be made of leaves or pine needles, and it wouldn't last very long. But Paul wrote that Jesus' followers should be running for a crown that will last forever. Take it, cheer squad. Yo, Jackie! Yes, it is! Do you want to win? Always! <laughs> win, mink, a race gives you a crown, but it will not. That's great, cheer squad. Now that we know the kind of race we're training for, the question is, how do we train? How do you practice life? Well, you can start with these four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. Hear means we should practice hearing from God by reading the Bible or listening for his wisdom. Pray means we should practice talking to God telling him how great he is and asking him for help and forgiveness. Talk is practicing talking about God with others. It's asking questions when we don't understand something and sharing the good news with people who haven't heard about Jesus. And live means we practice living for God. We try and think about God before every choice we make and do things in a way that honor him. That's how you train for the race of life. Let's hear one more from the cheer squad. Oh, hey, Jackie. Yeah, Dee Dee? I'm ready to lace up my kicks and oh. run this race. I hear you. Let's slay this thing. On your mark, get set, go. Are you in T-H-A-T race? Are you going to run like you want first place? Are you in? Like you mean it and you'll be an ace. Are you in T-H-A-T race? Remember four words that will help your case. Are you in T-H-A-T race? Hear, pray, talk, live. Now start today. Thanks, cheer squad. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I think I'm ready to run the 5K now. I think I'm ready for anything now. Two dollars! Oh, hoo -hoo! see? <laughs> it's true. When we train, when we practice, it prepares us for things, well, we might not see coming. You just got to remember those four words. Hear, pray, talk, and live. That's great, Kellen. Hey, thanks. You bet. See you next time. Bye. You know, it just occurred to me. We should get one of those running apps you can get on your phone. It'd be way simpler. <laughs> you ever hear of Catch to 5K? Reveal the question. How does practice help you? John? I practice soccer all the time. And now I can do this. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you. What about you? Uh, when, when I practice playing an instrument, it helps me learn it so well that I can do it without even thinking about it, like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who doesn't love the beautiful tones of the mouth harp? Right? Yeah. <laughs> what about you? How does practice help you? In sports or at school or in life. Talk about it together, and we'll see you next week for a brand new show! Yay! <laughs> Name that tune. OK. What Paul wrote in his letter is so true. If you want to be strong as you run the race of life, that takes commitment. You have to keep practicing what matters most. And you know what? That happens to be our bottom line for today. And I also want you to remember this, okay? Jesus told, he told us what matters most is to love God and to love others. We can learn to live that out when we take the time to practice our training steps. And here they are. Hear from God, pray to God, talk about God, and live for God. These are all ways that we can grow in our relationship with Him. Just like a runner has a plan and is training to get better at running, we have this plan to train and to grow in our relationship with Him. But it takes commitment to do these things. And the cool thing is, is that you will always be practicing. No matter how old you are, you're always gonna practice. I'm still practicing right now. 
Pastor Paul is still practicing right now. Your parents are still practicing because that is just what life is. And so as we're thinking about that, can we pray again? Can we pray that we have this commitment to practicing this out with him? Are you ready? Remember, get in whatever position feels comfortable and let's close our eyes to focus on him. God, thank you for giving us training steps. Thank you for loving us enough to give us those training steps. Thank you for leading us in that and having grace for us. God, would we just have your commitment? Would we have your power and strength to continue forward and keep practicing and growing in relationship with you so we can love you better and so we can love others better? God, we just, we love you so much and we wanna be the best we can be. And so we are ready to step into this commitment, step into this race of life with you and give it all we have. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, my friends, I miss seeing your face. If you haven't been around in a while, I cannot wait to see you in person. You did so amazing today. You prayed and worshiped and learned, and those are all great training steps that we can use to grow closer to God. So with that in mind, go ask an adult to print off the activity page, learn more about him this week, ask all of your questions, and most importantly, have fun. So. I love you. We'll see you later. Bye.